Attention, the following video may contain fun, humor, profanity, personal opinions, political incorrectness, and so on. If you are under the age of 18 or are easily offended by something as simple as gendered words, then I suggest you turn this video off and watch something more suited to you. Something like Sesame Street. Don't say I didn't warn you. G'day guys. Welcome to the channel and today's video is going to be a how-to video. Well, actually technically it's going to be somewhat of a retake of a how-to video. So if you've been following the channel for a while you'll see I've done a few how-to videos on airplanes, helicopters and cars. One of the car ones that I did was how to tune an engine. And I had actually intended that uh, video to be a, in part two of a two-part series. First part was how to break in an engine, and the second part was how to tune the engine in. Well, I went through all the effort of breaking in an engine, filming, filming it, editing it, and then my computer decided to have a brain fart and completely lose everything. So that was rather frustrating. So anyway, the opportunity came around. Um, as you may have seen, I have built a new nitro buggy to race. Thing, thing is though, is the engine that I have in it currently is on its way out. I didn't pay, I bought it brand new, broke it in, and it's been run and run and run. It's done events, it's done everything, club days, practice days. It's got a lot of mileage on it. And now it's, uh, having issues with the bearings so the problem is the particular engine this particular team Orion engine that I have in it now is you can't get parts for it so rather than try and scavenge parts for it on the internet it's going to work out cheaper to just to buy a new engine so what I've done is I've brought a new engine and it's an OS 21 buggy engine and we'll have a look at it at the moment. It's all down in the shed, ready to go. So what I'm going to do in this video is go through with you my procedure of doing an engine break-in. Now, I want to clarify right now that there are multiple videos on YouTube and throughout the internet on how to do an engine break-in. And I know there's going to be some people coming on this video saying, no, 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 this isn't how you do it. There's really no wrong way of breaking in an engine. There are various different methods. Um, and I'm definitely not saying that my way is the only way. However, I'm going to show you how my method of doing an engine break in works for me. And I've been doing this method for 10, 15 years. So I don't want to p people to think that my way is gospel and every other way is wrong. And also, some people might say, oh, just use the EBUS system. And if you're new to Nitro RC, EBUS is an acronym for Engine Braking System or Engine Braking Service, however you want to put it. Now, that's all very well and good. However, if you're like me and you live vast distance from anywhere where they have this system, you have to take the engine, post it away, do it, do it and it comes back. Well, that doesn't really work for me. Not only that, not everyone has the opportunity to do that as well. So this video is going to be aimed at really the newcomer that's um, in getting into it and this break-in uh, procedure that I do is mainly aimed at the aimed at racing engines but it does translate to your run-of-the-mill ready-to-run nitro engine so what we're going to do guys is we're going to go down to the shed and I'm going to show you how I break in a nitro engine Alright guys, so we are in the shed and now 
what we're going to do is we're going to get ready to start the car for the very first time. Now the method that I use is a heat cycle method. So it involves running so many tanks through a car and it also and in between each tank letting it cool down. Now the reason why we do this is the whole idea is for the piston and sleeve inside the engine to build up a tolerance and to bed in and so forth because unlike say a real car engine or maybe a model aircraft hel like helicopter engine say that has a piston ring the piston ring will as it uh, seats it helps form the compression whereas with your um, general nitro engine for a car or a truck or whatever they don't have piston rings the sleeve is tapered so it's one diameter at the bottom and slowly gets uh, a smaller diameter at the top that's what helps form the compression so we need to help the piston and sleeve bed in now unlike your general run-of-the-mill uh, pull start engine like this one here this SH uh, engine um, your race engine will be virtually seized when you get it so what we need to do first is we need to preheat the engine now there are two general ways of doing this one way is to use an engine heater like I have here if you do not have one of these you could use either a heat gun like this or a hairdryer and what we want to do is preheat the engine so everything inside the engine uh, expands because obviously metal expands when it's hot and contracts when it's cold so what you want to do is when if you don't have an engine heater uh, and you have say a heat gun like this or a hairdryer when you uh, go to heat it up don't just hold the heat gun in one section move it around in certain sections of the engine on the engine head and around the block for a few seconds so like one two three one two three one two three and so forth and what you want to do is you want to because the reason why is if you're holding it in one section say for instance this way here you're only heating up this side of the metal and on this side the metal is not as hot so obviously this side of the metal is expanding this isn't and you'll end up doing some well most likely you end up doing some uh, damage to the engine or the cooling head so you want to make sure that heat is evenly distributed and when the engine is heated you'll want to heat it I like to have my engines to around 80 85 degrees Celsius give or take and it helps to have one of these so what it does is uh, so for instance this is in the degrees Celsius um, degrees Fahrenheit I'm not sure um, but 80, 80 to 85 degrees Celsius I'll put down below what that is in Fahrenheit and how it works is you put it on top of the engine head push the button and you hold it for a few seconds let go and it'll tell you what the temperature is of of the surface so what we'll do is I will preheat the engine and I'll be back when it's uh, set and we'll get ready for the first start alright guys so we have the engine pretty much ready to go now uh, I've got the heater doing its thing now before we carry on one of the things I forgot to mention uh, when we're going to be doing uh, the driving part we'll need something to keep heat into the engine now uh, I have here this is an old uh, tire foam off a I think it's a 10 scale buggy this fits perfectly around the engine head but for the moment this will suffice because what we're going to do is idle a tank through so uh, hopefully um, the the uh, engine is heated up enough I'm just feeling it the engine block is warm 
so hopefully inside it's all nice and uh, expanded inside and I've got a tube running down into an old fuel bottle it's just so oil doesn't splatter everywhere so uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to put it uh, the camera down and hopefully hopefully knock on wood we'll be able to get this thing started so bear with me guys all right guys so we're ready to start now bear in mind as I said with race engines and possibly sub pull start engines too they can be very they basically seized so even though I've preheated this it could still be a little troublesome to start be patient with it but We've made sure, I've made sure that the uh, fuel is primed into the carb. Um, I've got everything, all the mixture needles set. Now, depending on what engine you have, will determine um, what the factory settings are. I, some, I also like to uh, check the factory settings. Just me, that's just how I am. So, everything's ready. So hopefully, it's ready to start. So. Let's see what happens. Make sure that the uh, when you oh, with the flywheel here, make sure that it's on the back part of the stroke or on it's on the start of the downstroke. So put it there. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't make a liar of me. Hopefully, this thing will start. If I can just. That's normal guys, don't panic. I might have to start this outside, there's more smoke than I expected. Now you want this at a fast idle so it doesn't cut out. I think we're going to have to take this outside. guys hopefully you can hear me so what we're doing so I've got it as I said you'll want it at a bit of a fast idle now periodically you'll want to give it a bit of a rev not a lot but right now we just want to keep it running and just let it idle and you'll want to keep an eye on your fuel tank level and you don't want the fuel tank level well, you, want the, you don't want the fuel level to get empty. You'll want to stop this at about oh, about a quarter, about an eighth of a tank, or a little bit less than an eighth of a tank. Because what happens is, as it gets lower, the fuel mixture will lean out, and then you don't, well, you don't want that with a brand new engine. So what we're going to do is we're just going to let this idle, and I will pause the video and I'll come back periodically. All right, guys. So it's been running for a little bit. Uh, still got. It's gone pr through pretty much all the fuel at the moment. I've got it sitting on an angle. Um, this floor isn't level, so it's on a slight angle. And the reason for that is it helps the excess oil to flow out the exhaust. And that way, it doesn't uh, bog down inside the pipe and cause the engine to stall. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep uh, idling it and just uh, every now and then check it. The temperature is good and then once we're getting close I will uh, show you what to do next. 
Right guys, so we're almost at the end of the tank of fuel. It's about an eighth of a tank left. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop it. I've got this little rubber stop here that's to hit the flywheel. And then I'll explain what we do next. All right, so we've gone through um, most, almost a full tank of fuel. So now what we do is we have the engine at the bottom of its stroke. So what you do is you feel it with the flywheel. Okay, starting to compress that way. Turn it back. Okay, it's starting to compress there. So then we move it a little bit and it's at the bottom of its stroke and we take the little uh, engine warmer, engine muff off <laughs> and what we do now is we let the engine cool and that is one heat cycle. So what we'll do next is since we've done a tank we're going to take it somewhere usually you could take it to the track or if you're just a basher take it somewhere quiet where it won't annoy everybody and then what we'll do is we'll do the driving part of the braking all right guys we are at a local park we have a magpies and onlooker making sure i do this right so what we're going to do guys is the same as before when we start we're going to preheat the engine uh, i don't have the engine heater with me because it requires a 14 volt power source um, however I have my heat gun with me in uh, this cooler here so what we're going to do is the exact same thing before we're going to preheat the engine and then what we're going to do is once it started we are going to slowly drive around so I'm going to preheat this off camera and we're going to go from there all right guys just getting trying to get it started it's a bit finicky at the moment but it is cold and the it keeps getting pinched at top dead center which is kind of normal but this is something you've got to be patient with circuits you want a nice stream of smoke coming out Unfortunately, being uneven makes it a little bit hard. And you want to keep an eye on your fuel level. You're going to be bored out of your skull doing this, guys, but trust me. So we're going to do it for this tank. And again, we're going to let it cool down in between. When you get towards the end of a tank, you'll notice the RPM start to increase and it'll be more responsive.
Yeah. When it starts getting real responsive, that's when you want to turn it off. So we'll stop it now, providing it doesn't stop itself. All right, now same as before, bottom dead center, right at the bottom of the stroke. All right, now the reason why we have the, uh, the piston at the bottom of its stroke is so because the piston and sleeve cool at various rates so you don't want the uh, sleeve uh, cooling more rapidly on the piston and causing damage so I'm gonna let it cool and we'll be back with tank number three and what we're going to do with tank number three is we're going to lean the main needle a little bit not a lot just a little bit for the next tank all right guys so it's going to be more of the same thing. So that what I've done is I've leaned it just a bit more than an eighth of a turn. Just a little bit. And what we're going to do is more of the same thing. And we're going to do this for the next three tanks. starting to rain. Great. So we'll do the same thing again, even though the tank's not empty. Alright, so it's starting to rain, so what I'm going to do is just doesn't matter if you you can always heat cycle in between a, a tank full tank so right there all right I will be back all right guys um, I finished the end of that tank off camera it's pretty much more of the same thing however as you can uh, possibly see there's water uh, the weather is not being kind as you can see just wipe the lens there so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to stop filming here um, I'm gonna to have to wait till there's a break in the weather but uh, the next two tanks are going to be the same and so that would be well I'll put down how many tanks in total that would have been I think it's about four tanks in total and then the next four tanks we will lean it again so I will do two more tank, uh, do another tank off camera. I'm sorry, I'm losing my place here. I'll go through it and I'll put down what's next. So um, I will do however many tanks of the same of what I've just done off camera and then I will continue on uh, with the next phase. All right, guys, we are. Uh, ready to do the next phase of the break-in. We are actually at where I usually test my drag cars. Um, as you can no doubt tell from the surface, it's been raining. Um, where I stopped uh, before, it had been raining previously. And so uh, had to leave it for a day. Got a chance to get out uh, with the break in the weather. So what we're going to do now is we are going to do the last four tanks of the initial break-in. Now when I say initial break-in there's a little bit more to do after you've done this. So after a period of eight tanks or roughly one litre of fuel, so that bottle there is one litre, 
after eight tanks the initial braking is done then once you've done that it's just a case of slowly tuning it in after each tank after that until it's done but we'll focus on these next four tanks so what we're going to do is we're going to lean the mixture a little bit just so it's producing a little bit of power also when your engine starts to bed in and settle in the compression will actually start to go up and if you leave the mixture as it is you're going to cause it to what's called hydrolock and you'll end up doing more damage than good so we'll need to lean what I'll do is I'll lean this mixture probably a little bit more than an eighth of a turn and we're going to run it like that for the next four tanks so what I'm going to do is I'm going to preheat it and I'll explain and then I'll explain the running uh, from then on all right guys what we're going to do now is we're going to start driving around more but what we're going to do is we're going to alternate the speeds and go a little bit faster but not a lot but let it warm up first Okay, so just keep the speed up a little bit. Might need to lean it a little bit more, just a little bit. slowly bring up the throttle you don't want to do full throttle though just enough so it gets a little bit of speed so bring it up and let it coast a nice stream of smoke and no rain okay so it's just starting to rain guys so I'm gonna bring it in and I'm gonna shut it off and remember to let it stop at bottom dead center so remember bottom dead center guys so feel the compression Feel the compression there. All right, so bottom dead center, and you can just let it do a heat cycle. And it's probably just it's used about three quarters of a tank doing that. So what I'll do is I'll finish the tank off, and then I will after when it stopped raining, then I'll explain what to do next. All right, guys. So I've finished that tank. And again, it's the same thing as always, heat cycle it with the piston at bottom dead center of the stroke. So now, this is going to be the exact same thing again. 
so what I will do is I'll do the next three tanks off camera well the next two tanks off camera and then at the end of the uh, eighth tank I will go through show you the next part but again it's the same thing so just basically go up and down give it some speed and with each tank give it a little bit more speed with each tank and then just let it coast and then start again and like I keep saying guys you're gonna be bored out of your freaking skull doing this but if you take the time to do this the engine is going to last you a long time so I'm going to do the next tank uh, two tanks off t off camera and I'll be back Alright guys, so we're just doing the 8th tank, about half a tank through, so it's going to be the same thing. So like I said, each tank get a little bit faster not a lot So we'll keep going a little bit more. Same as before guys, with every tank, bottom dead center, and we let it cool. Alright guys, so that is pretty much it. So that was 8 tanks in total, because uh, a 125cc tank, and, and you times that by 8 you have 1000 1000 uh, cc is 1 litre so it has had 1 litre of fuel through it so that is really the initial break in of the engine so now all that is left to do is over the next three tanks is to slowly lean the engine out a little bit at a time over three tanks and with that, so uh, you'll want to lean it an eighth of a turn. So I'll do that now, just for reference. So an eighth of a turn. And what you'll want to do is go to your track or your bash area and start running it at full throttle for half a tank. So when it gets to half a tank, then you will lean it again another eighth of a turn and do that and you'll do that for three tanks guys so then again the next tank you lean it again an eighth of a turn do a half a tank lean it again another eight eighth of a turn and do that for three like i said three tanks you'll want to do that so each half tank lean it an eighth Go down another half tank, lean it an eighth again. And that, guys, is really the, the break-in procedure. And that's what I've been doing for the past 10, 15 years. And my engines are, like, I've got a nitro touring car that I've had since 2008. And the 
piston and sleeve is starting to lose its pinch now. So that gives you an idea. So guys, that is the end of this uh, tu tutorial video. I hope, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have any questions on the engine, the fuel I'm using, um, plugs and so forth, don't hesitate to comment down below. I'll do my best to um, answer your questions. And until then guys, enjoy your hobby and cheers.